Hello, Dr. Harper. Well, hello, Dr. Cho. Uh, Kelly was just sharing with the rest of the program leadership that you're presenting this morning, so you may see some familiar faces come in. Oh, joy. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> There's a friend. And uh, Dr. Shepard, my favorite Dr. Shepard. I'm re-watching Grey's Anatomy as part of my um, research for an, uh, a GS gym proposal we have for a workshop. So um, I appreciate that. Yeah. I don't know why, but Shepard is a very popular last name for a physician in TV shows. Uh, Whitney, the question came up during our meeting whether there is any utility of getting evaluations, peer evaluations for you. We didn't think so, but I, if you need it. I don't know what I would do with it, but I hope people enjoy my presentation. If not, then enjoy a 45-minute nap. Hey guys, good morning. We'll go ahead and get started. I just want to give like a brief intro because I know some of the interns are new to Academic Half Day. I'm Karen. I'm one of the outpatient chiefs. Um, the outpatient chiefs, Nikki, Arita, and I, and Dr. Cho, um, help run Academic Half Day. Um, and it's mostly teaching for residents who are on ambulatory consult research outpatient electives. Um, it usually shows up on our schedule as I am didactics. Um, if we're expected to be here, if we're on vacation or away rotation, then we're not expected to be here. Um, just uh, to note is that there is some in-person sessions um, that are listed in the email that we send out, but we'll also communicate with you guys when the, the sessions are in person. Um, today, we're gonna have um, two lectures, um, the first one will be by Whitney Harper, second one by um, Andrew Gonzalez, and then the third session, um, seniors are free, and then the interns will go into a separate Zoom link um, to go into the intern core conference that's going to be led by Mac. Okay, so I guess I should share my screen and all that. Let's see here. Whitney, do you want an introduction? <laughs> I mean, sure. Yeah. I feel like people know me, though. Yeah. If if all of you, if you don't know Whitney, you should. Uh, Whitney is a vital member of our team and uh, is the person at the other end of SkedgeIM and others. Um, and she is the newly minted Dr. Whitney Harper, and uh, she will be sharing her presentation or dissertation for her research that led to her doctorate in education. So uh, if you haven't yet, please make sure to also give her the appropriate applause. Thank you for that lovely introduction, John. Um, so thank you all for joining today. Uh, are you seeing what I want you to see? Perfect. Um, I am not great at following the chat uh, while I am presenting, but I will do my best uh, if there are questions that arise. And I do encourage questions as I go through this. Um, yeah, I just uh, finished my doctoral uh, program and um, my dissertation was on perspectives of first year internal medicine residents uh, on evaluating medical students, primarily in the inpatient clinical setting. Um, these are the slides that I used for my defense, so they're a little bit more formal than I probably would have done for just one of this a talks to you, but um, yeah, let's see here. Um, so I'll first provide some background to this study. 
The problem that the study examined was a gap in the literature regarding the first year resident experience in evaluating medical students and how it may relate to the pressures associated with the transition to residency. The purpose of this basic qualitative study was to explore the lived experiences of first year medicine, medical residents evaluating third year medical students in an inpatient clinical environment. Um, so the research study was guided by these three questions. Uh, the first one, how do first year medical residents perceive their role as an evaluator of third year medical students? Uh, second, what is the experience of first year medical residents regarding the preparation to evaluate third year medical students? And finally, how do first year medical residents describe their lived experiences related to the transition to residency? Now, one thing I wanna to mention to you is I'm gonna use the term first year medical residents throughout this presentation. I mean, interns, um, my advisors are not in medical education. So I had to change this wording to them so that they understood what I was saying throughout the entire um, dissertation process. Um, before conducting this study, I conducted a review of relevant literature. The literature presented multiple studies on the perceived learning curve between medical school and residency and how the transition to residency is a time of uncertainty for both new interns and residents. Relevant research discussed the higher risk of burnout residents face compared to their peers and other professions, as well as compared to positions of higher levels. The research presented strong arguments for the, necess the necessity of hierarchical medical team structures in the clinical training environment and how hierarchies enhance learning for medical students and residents, particularly through the near peer teaching experiences between resident and medical student. The research reviewed argued that residents are perceived as successful teachers in the clinical learning environment and that their assessments of medical students are as accurate as those for faculty. And the literature examining teaching workshops for medical trainees, both students and residents, suggested they can enhance teaching skills and increase the desire to become future educators. Um, so the chosen study site for the study was the University of Washington, which is a large allopathic medical school within a large public university located in Washington State. I chose this site, one, because I work here and I know all of you, uh, but also um, because of the three different hospital sites that residents rotate in with very different team structures and patient populations. And the variations may influence first year resident perceptions of evaluating medical students on inpatient wards. Um, in order to participate in the study, um, participants had to be first year residents in the Eternal Medicine Residency Program, this program, um, with no prior graduate medical education training. Nine participants were recruited through purposeful sampling. Um, the chosen methodology of this study was a basic qualitative study. Qualitative research uses interpretive process to understand how individuals or groups find meaning in and interpret their experiences or social worlds. Conceptual frameworks provide the support of all aspects of a research study, including the problem of the study through the research design. Social construction, social constructivism is the foundation of basic qualitative research studies as a fundamental trait of basic qualitative studies is that participants construct their realities through their social connections. Because social constructivism theory contributed to the conceptual framework of this study, I identified a basic qualitative study as the strongest methodology. Study recruitment occurred through email communication. The associate director, Kelly, um, forwarded an email to first year residents in the internal medicine residency program. The email provided pertinent study information and the participant information sheet was included in the study recruitment email. Interested participants were instructed to contact me directly through my University of New England email address to participate in the study. The nine study participants completed semi-structured individual interviews averaging 52 minutes in length. Um, so upon completion of the individual interviews, I transcribed them and sent the transcription to each participant for review as a way of a member check. After member checks were received or the deadline of one week passed, the recordings were destroyed and I began coding the data using QDA Miner, a software program that assists researchers in managing coding and analyzing qualitative data. I used an inductive coding process by assigning unique codes based on the data itself. This resulted in 74 unique codes across three domains. Um, I then used a pattern coding process in the second round of coding, which allowed me to group the data together to condense the codes to 26 across nine categories and three domains. Um, and this is the final code book. The domains were the larger topical areas that surrounded the context of the identified categories. 
is to group the individual codes. So for example, the categories of perspectives of student grades, evaluating MS3s and preparedness for evaluating MS3s all fell within the larger context of evaluation. Categories medical school residency program and PGY1 stressors all corresponded with the larger context of the transition to residency. And finally, the categories of clinical environment, learning environment, and working with MS3s were associated with the sphere of participants' board experiences. Um, so a concern of this study was the existing relationship I had with the participants. Um, I chose, like I said, I chose the institution as a study site um, due to my role in the program. While I'm not in a supervisory role, I do um, work with the residents very closely um, and therefore participants may not have been as honest in their answers as they would in a study by someone not affiliated with the program. That said, a limitation of any study using interviews is as a data collection source is a bias that may result in responses due to the researcher's presence. So individuals create an inherent power imbalance and hierarchy between the interviewer and the interviewee. And while my relationship with the study participants may have caused additional bias, that limitation could exist regardless of my relationship with the participants. Um, another limitation of interviews is that the differences in participant articulation and perception levels, um, as with any qualitative study, the interpretation of the data in the study was subjective to my judgment, the researcher's judgment. So personal bias is another potential limitation of this study. Um, to reduce personal bias, I conducted member checks where the participants reviewed their transcripts for accuracy. Um, another limitation of this study was the focus of a single specialty within a large institution. Not all interns evaluate medical students in their own specialty. So possible critique of the study may be the generalization that it only applies to this program. Um, so after the second round of coding, I reviewed, it the, I reviewed the coded data to identify commonalities and overarching themes across the collected data. Four themes emerged. Um, I found commonalities within and across three identified domains, for example, some data that was coded under the categories working with MS3s and evaluating MS3s shared commonalities in that participants felt responsible for the growth of third year medical students, which emerged as the first theme. The second emergent theme was identified through commonalities found in the categories, perspectives of student grades, evaluating MS3s, preparedness for evaluating MS3s, and working with MS3s, specifically the data coded under responsibility towards MS3s. The second theme was concerns about impact of, sub of the subjective grades and evaluations. And after the review of data found in the categories, evaluating MS3s, preparedness for MS3s, PGY1 stressors, specifically in the data coded imposter syndrome, learning environment and working with MS3s, I identified a third theme of unpreparedness to evaluate third year medical students. The fourth theme that emerged from the data was found after the analysis of the similarities primarily within the transition to residency domain, although much of the data was cross-coded to all identified categories. The fourth theme identified was preparedness for the first year of residency. So um, the first theme, feeling responsible for the growth of third year medical students. Seven of the nine participants shared that they were unclear about their role on teams related to the medical students they worked with, but they overwhelmingly felt responsible for helping the students' growth on the rotation. Um, a, a quote that demonstrates this is, I think I was initially told by my senior that like the senior is responsible for students. And I think they actually said that because I was trying to teach them something. And they're like, I don't feel like you need to, I'm going to be the one that's looking after them. All participants shared that their role as a teacher varied on the team and setting, and the overall team dynamics impacted the learning environments for both medical students and the participants' ability to interact with, teach, and evaluate the third-year medical students. Regardless of team and setting, however, seven study participants shared ways that they sought to help third-year medical students become better physicians in training on their inpatient rotations. Um, one participant said, I've been trying to focus my teaching on, more on effort and like be bedside behavior or manner rather than clinical knowledge. Because I think that's something that clinical knowledge is something that will come with time. And I am still very much so learning that as well. But I think that bedside manner, efficiency, and I don't even remember what the third one I said, effort. I think those three are like the key things that you need as an intern to do well. Uh, 
commonality across all nine study participants was the desire to help contribute to their third year medical students' education in a positive and helpful way. Uh, one of the participants said, a lot of the teaching I do is more like passing on tips that I've learned in the last couple of years that have made my life easier. So the second theme of concerns about, evalu about the impact of subjective grades and evaluations, um, when talking about their role as an evaluator of third year medical students, all nine participants shared concerns about the subjectivity of grading practices, as well as the negative repercussions of low grades on the career trajectory of medical students. These concerns were referenced when participants reflected on their past evaluations as medical students, as well as when they reflected on their experiences as interns evaluating third year medical students. Uh, so a participant spoke of how unattainable the highest scores are in the grading rubric, uh, saying, and like a five, when you read the description, feels almost unattainable. I think there's only one student I've had so far where I'm like, oh, actually, they're all fives. Like for the student performing at a five, they were only a third year, and they probably could have been an intern. That's how well they were performing. Even our attending was like, oh my gosh, they call consults better than I do, right? So it's like that level where it's like a five. Three participants shared worries about inconsistencies in grading practices across team members. One study participant shared that while they were doing their best to evaluate students based on narrative anchors on the grading rubrics, that may not be the common practice. Quote, I don't necessarily think everyone follows them. I think sometimes when people are busy, they're liable to put all threes or all fours or all fives, whether or not the student like actually fell into those categories. Um, six participants suggested the larger the large role grades play in medical students' chances to match into residency influence their grading practices. Um, quote, I don't want to write a bad evaluation for anyone because I know these things are really important for them for residency applications. My goal is to give the most positive evaluation possible. Um, so third theme of un unpreparedness to evaluate medical students. Eight participants showed that they did not feel prepared to adequately evaluate third year medical students in the inpatient setting. These eight participants spoke of the lack of training in both teaching and evaluating students, which some participants felt was an additional burden in their first year residency. The eight participants also shared concerns with the expectation of evaluating medical students due to their similar levels in clinical knowledge, especially early in the first year residency. When asked about their preparation to evaluate third year medical students, Seven participants shared that there was a one-hour session provided during orientation to the residency program. However, six of those seven participants shared that that was not enough training to adequately prepare them for their role as an evaluator. One participant said, I wasn't prepared for evaluating medical students, to be honest. I know we did a session during orientation where we talked about the prime rubric that they use here, and then we watched a video of a student giving a presentation. But the whole experience has been so new to me. Four participants commented that they should learned how to evaluate from watching others, talking to their attendees and senior residents, and from reviewing their, eval their, their evaluations from when they were medical students. One participant shared that they looked at their medical student performance evaluation to, look, to learn how to provide written feedback to their medical students. They stated, because I felt, feel like when we get the medical student evaluations, it's like always at the end of an exhausting rotation, and I just like don't have the brain with to think about it and write something wonderful and nice. And oftentimes it makes it takes me looking at a lot of that I can apply to the student. But yeah, it definitely took me looking back and being like, huh, what did other people do for me? So that I can, you know, also kind of follow that same structure. When discussing their role as an evaluator of third year medical students, seven participants suggested that it should not be the role of the first of the intern to evaluate the students or that their evaluation should be weighted at lower level than evaluations from senior residents and attendings on the team one participant said i think it would be fine if a senior resident were to evaluate medical students especially if that's built into their role to be teaching and working with them i'm not sure how useful it is to have interns do that they also, they have a lot of responsibilities on their plate. Also take into account how to evaluate students when they aren't necessarily tasked with the responsibility of teaching them. It is important to note though, that while seven participants advocated for changes in the evaluator role, all participants felt that interns should contribute to providing feedback to the medical students in some way, be it direct feedback to the students or in written comments submitted to the grading committee. Um, 
So the fourth theme, preparedness for the first year of residency. All study participants shared how they felt supported by both their medical schools and the residency program for the expect expectations of, for the first year of residency training. Six participants uh, spoke of a transition to residency course or boot camp, um, and they felt particularly supported by their medical school for the expectations of residency. Uh, one study participant in particular spoke highly of their medical school's transition to residency course. I definitely feel like my medical school did a lot for sure to prepare you prepare us. You know, I think the course that I described at the end, like the transitions course, where they really taught us how to like how to think like an intern, like triage complaints, think about like sick versus non-sick. Uh, the four participants of the study who completed a student as teacher elective in medical school or had training um, or teaching requirements in medical school felt supported by their schools for the expectation of working with third year medical students in the inpatient setting. While not all participants had this had opportunities to teach lower level medical students in medical school, the four that did indicated that they felt prepared to work with third third year medical students. Um, one participant shared, um, I also participated a lot in like our clinical skills, like simulation lab. And you know, and so you would, you know, work with the standardized patient, have a case or whatever. And then you had to present that to, case to a fourth year medical student. And then when we got to give feedback on presentations and like mo note writing. So in that sense, I do, I do think it helped me because then you kind of like see where the, the structure people are and how they need some feedback on um, and what you can improve in notes. And I feel those are things I look for now. Um, all study participants identified ways the residency program's orientation was helpful for preparing them for the first year residency, specifically in procedure-based skill training and the community building events. Inpatient skill simulations, both procedure-based and non-procedure-based, were identified as very useful to six participants. One participant shared, you know, honestly, and I genuinely mean this, I feel like my program did everything to allow for the transition. Yeah, because I had we had procedure skills training as well. We honestly had, I think, I don't know that there was anything else the program could have done. I think I felt pretty like well prepared for like my first rotation and like the rest of my rotations. The other portion of the residency program orientation that contributed to participants' feelings of preparedness for residency was its focus on community building within the program. One participant shared opportunities to engage with other like senior or outgoing residents was useful, even if it wasn't specifically about like, how do you start intern year? I had always inevitably asked those questions of senior residents. So it was another opportunity to interface with people that have gone through what I was about to go through. So the first research question asked how first year medical students perceive their role as an evaluator of third year medical students. This question was developed to explore the experiences first year residents have in evaluating third year medical students in the inpatient clinical setting. Two overarching themes that emerge from data analysis related to question one, feeling responsible for the growth of third year medical students and concerns about the impact of subjective grades and evaluations. I found two commonalities across these themes. Uh, first was the uncertainty as to, a, as to whether the role of an evaluator should be an expectation of an intern and second, the role of the role as a near peer mentor was pre preferred to the role of an evaluator. Participants in this study described their understanding of their role as an evaluator of third year medical students. The participants individually described feelings of doubt and uncertainty to, as to whether they should have the role as an evaluator of the MS3s they worked with. There were many reasons behind this uncertainty, including the lack of clarity of the level the medical students should be performing at during various points of the year, the feelings that their medical knowledge is not much higher than that of medical students, the feelings of being overwhelmed with other clinical responsibilities that take away from being able to watch the medical student performance over time, and the unwillingness to harm a medical student's future career with a bad evaluation. Study participants spoke of their responsibility to the growth of the students on their teams and wanting to help them look good to the more senior members of their team. Um, so these are some quotes that demonstrate um, those overarching findings. Um, first one on medical student performance expectations. Quote, I think also knowing what level they should be at the stage 
I think it's easy for me to forget because it seems so recent. And yet I've learned so much to forget what level people should be at each stage of the third year. Um, and then regarding clinical knowledge levels being very similar, um, one participant said, because you feel like, look, I just graduated medical school, like just the other day, how am I in a position to grade you? Like, I feel like we have the same level as you know, even though we might be like two or two and a half years apart, it's like you still haven't learned a whole lot because technically you can just cross off the fourth year of med school after March. Um, Overstretched with clinical tasks, uh, one participant said, I just feel like in turn year, you're juggling so many different things and you're just trying to feel, figure out what your style is, that it's really hard to pay good attention to an, how another person is doing. Um, and then uh, unwillingness to harm medical students' futures. Um, I, what I found difficult about evaluating students is that I know how much of a subjective effect it is on giving someone a numerical score and how that could like really hurt them, hurt or harm their grade in a specific rotation that could ultimately affect what they go into. Um, and then regarding their pref preferred role of a near peer mentor or over evaluator, um, they talked about wanting to prevent negative lived experiences that they had in medical school. So one participant said, I guess for me, what felt like it was kind of a rough transition, I didn't really get the guidance through is mostly what I've been trying to teach the medical students. Um, and then talking about how they teach skills they wish they knew. Um, quote, I personally love to teach like small things that I think would be really helpful if I knew at that stage or just in general. I also love learning mechanisms of things and explaining them. Um, they also spoke of wanting to help the students look good um, so my role this year that I've had with medical students is to be more on their side and evaluate them, but more for the purpose of making them look good in front of the patient, making them look good on rounds, making them look good in front of everyone else. Um, and then many spoke that the ideal relationship with medical students is not evaluative. Unfortunately, in these residency teams, there's so much hierarchy, like even in the nature of our roles, like the senior resident then like we're referred to as the intern and then there's the medical student. And I feel like the intern and the third year can have more of a horizontal relationship and can offer a lot of the teaching and like the logistics of how to just exist on the wards and like what the paths and responsibilities look like. I think having a non-evaluative aspect would be more useful in like making things more horizontal between an intern and a third year medical student. And then I just wanna highlight this quote in particular because I feel like it says a lot about um, the role and the feelings about evaluating medical students that one participant shared. Um, they said, I personally don't think as an intern, you should be able to grade a third year medical student. You should be expected to teach a third year med student. I don't think that grading should have be an expectation. So think about this, okay? Let's say you have student A and student B. And by chance, just by luck, based on scheduling and whatnot, student A ended up doing an inpatient rotation early on in the intern year's year. You have an intern who's super swamped and still learning the system, and then having to grade this med student. And then you have student B, based on scheduling luck, ended up getting paired with an intern out in May of the intern year, meaning later on in the intern's year. I honestly think those two evaluations are going to be significantly different. And what you've done at this point is you've given student B an opportunity to have a higher grade than student A, even though they may be completely equal in skills and quality. Um, so research question two asks, what is the experience of first year medical residents regarding the preparation to evaluate the third year medical students? Um, it was developed to understand how they are prepared to evaluate third year medical students in the clinical setting. The third theme that emerged from data analysis, unpreparedness to evaluate medical students, strongly related to this research question. After careful review of this theme, I identified two collective results related to the second research question. First, uh, first year residents did not feel prepared to evaluate third year medical students. And second, first year residents felt more prepared to evaluate third year medical students over time and experience. All but one participant in the study stated they felt ill-prepared to evaluate medical students. The expectation of evaluating students who are who first year residents perceive as competent versus struggling may be an additional complexity in the feelings of preparedness to evaluating third year medical students. Um, 
social constructivism theory, which was first developed by Vygotsky in 1978, suggests that learning happens socially through interactions with people in their learning environments, um, which allows learning to connect learners to connect new information to previously learned skills and knowledge. Three study participants discuss their process of learning, how to evaluate um, through experience or building on their previous knowledge over time. These participants all felt they were more prepared to evaluate medical students later in the year after they built up those experiences in the evaluation process. Um, and when they discussed on um, how they developed their evaluation skills, seven of those nine um, participants spoke of learning through interactions they had during the year or with other team members. Attending physicians, senior residents, and other first-year residents played valuable roles in helping study participants understand the evaluation process. Um, participants in the study indicated they learned how to evaluate through constructing new skills throughout the year and through social interactions with the learning environments, thus social constructivism provides a possible explanation as to how first-year residents learn how to evaluate third-year medical students on their teams. Um, just some quotes that demonstrate this. Um, first one on having multiple students at once adds complexity. Um, participants said, I felt really conflicted about that because it was really hard not to let emotions kind of cloud the judgment of like the of like the what of like the of the students' clinical abilities. And I think the other thing that made it difficult is that two students were also kind of different levels clinically as well. So it's really hard to have two students and not compare the two of them, especially when they were so different and we were drawing comparisons the whole rotation. I tried to like, I tried to take like as an objective, like as objective view as I could and tried to just, again, draw upon the patient experiences that they had or the patients they cared for or how they interacted with them, how they documented their interactions. Uh, and then a uh, second result of general doubt about evaluative abilities. Quote, I definitely see myself as someone who, yes, can like teach third year medical students and guide them, but in no way do I feel like I could properly evaluate them. Um, so learning uh, through social constructivism over time, quote, I think they, that definitely like throughout the year it gets, it's definitely gotten easier to like evaluate and to be more of a teacher towards medical students. Um, skills will continue to increase, quote, next year I'll be a little better because now I've seen and evaluated a few different medical students and I've also learned how other people evaluate those med students and what their benchmarks are um, and learning from others. Quote, the only other thing I would say and how I learned to evaluate is just like in discussions with other residents, seniors and co-interns in terms of like, or kind of experiences they use to factor into their evaluations. Um, finally, research question three asked how uh, first year medical residents describe their lived experiences related to the transition of residency. This question developed understanding for how first year residents perceive their transition of medical student to resident fourth theme that emerged from the data analysis prepare, preparation for the for first year of residency directly related to this question. Um, I found two commonalities supported by the data, um, supportive environments, i.e. team dynamics and leadership, assist the transition to residency, and the first year of residency requires on-the-job learning. So all the participants of the study spoke of the supportive environment the residency program provided to their transition to residency. They spoke of support at all levels, but particularly referenced the senior residents, their near peers, as being helpful resources early in their first year. In addition to feeling supported in the clinical environment, they spoke of the community that they developed early in the year with the peers and near peers within the program as being beneficial to their transition. Um, uh, social constructivism and a modified um, Dreyfus model of skill acquisition by Caracchio et al. Um, in 2008 provided frameworks, I think it's Caracchio, um, for how medical trainees develop their skills over time. The social environment paired with the graduated autonomy provides a safe learning environment for them to gain clinical knowledge and procedural skills. Um, these theories pair nicely with the reflections provided by the study participants that much of their learning in their first year residency was done on the job. As they faced a steep learning curve entering their first year residency, the decrease in oversight of the participants in the study spoke of aligns with the medical trainee progression as outlined in the adaptive model of the Dreyfus model of skill acquisition. Um, so quotes that demonstrate this in the clinical setting, um, 
quote, I think the best way to be prepared is just feel like you'd be supported and it's okay for you to ask for help. And I think the residency program did do a good job of making us feel that way at the start. And then with the all the seniors and attendings I've worked with so far, they made it feel very supportive uh, for me to be able to say, I don't know, or, you know, ask questions. It definitely feels a lot safer than it did in medical school because I don't feel like my lack of knowledge or like me asking a question will determine where I'm allowed to then go for residency or what, whatever afterwards. Um, supportive environment with peers and colleagues. Quote, the social support has been really important for me in particular. And I meet up with other residents one or two times a week, pretty much every week. Um, learning on the job, so uh, steep learning curve. Quote, it's a steep learning curve, and so having to take time to learn about things that you don't learn in medical school or learning more about more complex management issues takes up a lot of time, and there's a lot of responsibilities that gets added on as an intern. Um, and then they talked about trial by fire. Quote, I guess I don't know what to compare it to, but it was certainly like learning on the job and trial by fire. I started on a diff difficult rotation, and my team was pretty understanding with my like lack of knowledge. My first two weeks were difficult and each day got better. I think I looked to try to improve each day. As long as that happened, I felt good about leaving the hospital. Uh, another quote, my transition was a bit trial by fire. I started on rotation name, which is one of our most difficult rotations during the intern year. I came into a full list and had to pick, pick up the whole thing and also figure out how to use Epic, which we didn't use at my med school and do all the resident things. The first week was pretty rough, but it made the rest of the year easier, honestly, starting with that rotation. Um, so finally, implications, um, you know, research question one asked how first year residents perceive their role as an evaluator of third year medical students. Findings based on this study um, suggest that interns recognize their role of evaluator as important, but perceive themselves to be unqualified for the role. Um, the findings of the study imply that first year medical residents perceive the grading process of third year medical students to be subjective and unfair, which they felt altered their ability to adequately evaluate their third year medical students. Consideration of this year's study's findings may lead to further study and mindfulness of the heightened awareness first year residents have in the importance of medical student clinical grades and how uh, this greater awareness may change the way they interact with and evaluate their medical students. Um, the second research question asked how first year residents Describe their experiences in their preparation to evaluate third-year medical students. Study found that first-year residents um, describe their experiences to prepare third-year medical students to be incomplete and that first-year residents may primarily learn how to evaluate through time and experience. Medical student clinical, clinical rotation and residency program leadership should consider these results when providing uh, instruction and resources to first-year residents in how to evaluate third-year medical students. Um, and then finally, res research question three asked how first year residents describe their lived experiences re related to the transition to residency. Based on this study, um, found that first year residents describe their experiences as learning on the job. Um, the results of the study add that first year residents described a supportive environment, both inside and outside the clinical atmosphere, as especially beneficial to their transition. Um, residency program directors should consider the results of the study when creating orientation activities for new first year residents in their program. It's possible that creating optional social events for current and new residents to attend could benefit their incoming first year residents. Um, so, first recommendation for action uh, is to reevaluate evaluative role interns have. Uh, Instead of completing summit evaluations, um, first year residents could have opportunities to provide comments or contribute to grading discussions of the medical students they work with, um, replacing that requirement to submit evaluations with providing only written feedback. Other students could allow for the interns to provide input on the growth they saw in their students, as well as any concerns they noted, while removing the grading requirement that causes them additional stress and work during their uh, first year of training. Additionally, removing the role of evaluator of medical students from first-year residents could result in more accurate grades of medical students as participants in the study stated they inflate their student grades. Um, improving the accuracy of clinical grades could benefit residency programs as they often use clinical grades as a tool to select which applicants to interview for the residency programs. Um, second one, Recommendation is that medical student program leadership provide evaluators of third year medical students with training in the evaluation process with realistic examples 
of what each level of performance looks like for, in the early, mid, and end of the third year medical student uh, medical school. Um, as part of this training, medical student program leadership should provide a standardized tool for people responsible for providing feedback to third year medical students. The uncertainty as to how students should be performing was a noted frustration of the study participants, and these descriptions would benefit all levels of evaluators, particularly those new to the institutions because medical evaluations are not standardized across medical schools. Having a standardized way to provide feedback could alleviate anxiety around providing, a, providing feedback as well as provide expectations for students and residents and how they will receive feedback from supervisors. Uh, third recommendation, um, is, uh, oh, no, this I guess was the fourth recommendation, and it is a pie in the sky that medical schools provide and require students teacher training for medical students in their fourth year of school. Um, while only one study participant completed in a formal students teacher elective study, other study participants opted into more formal educational experiences in medical school to build in their near peer, near -peer teaching skills. Um, and someone else was required to teach in their clinical rotations by incorporating applicable studies into their patient presentations. These four participants felt prepared or somewhat prepared by their medical school for the teaching responsibilities of residency, whereas the other five participants stated they did not feel prepared at all by their medical students. Um, participants in the study also supported the argument that medical school is the correct time um, for physicians in training to start learning how to teach as opposed to during residency because those that do participate in these are uh, learn how to teach in medical school are better prepared for um are better preparing their graduating students for the teaching responsibilities of residency um an easy way to provide this training could be as part of boot camp or transition residency course the medical schools provide to their graduating medical students Timing of the boot camp allows for the knowledge to be fresh uh, before they begin residency, where they can apply the, the skills that they learn as soon as day one of residency training. So um, that's my pie in the sky recommendation to medical education. Um, and then uh, for future study, um, one study on a broader study of the perception of residents at all levels evaluating third year medical students. Um, while most participants in this study stated they predict they will feel more prepared to take on this role as senior residents. The existing literature on resident perceptions of evaluating medical students remains sparse. Um, so um, a broader study that included residents in all training levels could identify whether this barrier um, of, um, you know, unwillingness to harm their students' future with low scores is unique to the interns or if it persists throughout residency. Um, and then a second uh, recommendation is a study on whether the perception of third year medical students' psychological safety changes based on the knowledge that their near peers will or will not be evaluating their performance. Um, so while only two participants in the study shared that they were not evaluated by first year medical, uh, first year residents on their internal medicine rotation during medical school, um, both of those participants said they felt safer in asking questions to their interns as third year students because they would not be evaluating them. So due to that small sample size in the study, um, this was not prevalent enough to be a significant finding, but I do recommend a study on whether the perception of um, psychological safety changes based on knowing uh, whether their near peers will or will not be evaluating their performance. These are some references I have highlighted throughout my presentation. A small sample of the nine pages of references during my study. And then finally, I just want to thank all of the medical students and residents I've worked with over the past 13 years, with particular thanks to everyone who generously participated in this study. Questions? John Cho, you're raising your hand. Well, first of all, I just want to acknowledge and say what I hope many people are thinking, which is you did all this and you do our schedules, which, uh, yeah, where where is the time? Um, and also to thank you all for um, particularly those residents who may be actually in the session who may have participated also to thank them for um, providing their insights. Um, with an eye towards um, the fact that you're going to publish this eventually and the reactions and uh, responses from this group actually might help fine tune some of the interpretation. I wondered if people have reactions to what they've seen here and and actually thinking and reflecting on 
what they uh, what your positions are now as whether your interns are twos or are threes what your reactions are to these findings and if anyone's unwilling to unmute and share or share their their reactions or um, thoughts about these I mean, I'd say for, for at least myself, you know, I know the study was mostly of like interns and the reaction of like grading our uh, MS3s, but like even as an R2, I don't necessarily feel quote unquote like qualified to, hey, this is somebody who's really stellar versus, you know, it could be that this is just that point of the year for them or this is uh, a hard ro rotation for them. And it's like, knowing how much weight our evaluations have for the future of this person as far as where they're going to get placed in residency is a big thing and weighing that responsibility against hey do i really feel you know that i am the most best qualified person to make this assessment to have that result in that person's life is is not something I take without um, a good deal of stress. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I would be interested to hear what every level of residents and even like fellows, how they feel, because I think it's all probably intertwined. Like you build these skills over time, but you probably also add to insecurities of whether you're doing it right is my guess. That's how I would feel anyway. I'll, I'll add that recruitment is right around the corner and we'll be looking at a lot of information about potential uh, new entrants coming in. So very much on our minds. Hey, it's Olivia. I can talk a little bit about from a third year perspective. Um, I do think that my perspective on evaluation, evaluating medical students has changed slightly from intern year until now. I think intern year, I was like very much so resonated with like protection, protecting the medical student and really making them look as good as possible. And that is still definitely one of my priorities. But I think the further I progress in training, the more my focus is also on like, especially for fourth year medical students, do I trust this person to like be a doctor in a year? Um, and this was kind of shaped by my experience. It was actually a really stressful experience my second very early on second year when my attending approached me and asked me what I thought about holding a medical student back from graduating. <laughs> and I had no idea what I was doing. And I felt very unqualified to evaluate the student. And I really hadn't even thought about that at all. I thought maybe he was just, you know, I, I, I don't really know what I thought, but I think when I reflected back on that experience and that medical student, I think he the my attending actually ended up contacting the medical school to to hold him back from graduating, which I felt really bad about. Um, and when I reflected back on the experience, I think I would have felt unsafe having that person as my doctor if he were like an intern in just a handful of months. So it, I think it's just a little bit, I, I still like very much so resonate with, you know, making the med student look as good as possible, but also we really want to be making sure that we, uh, that people are prepared to be doctors because it's a really big responsibility. Thanks, Olivia. Oh, John, I went over time. I'm sorry. That, that's okay. A Andrew has already said very generously that he's okay with you taking a few minutes here. Okay. I'm curious about current interns also, whether this continues to resonate with folks who are uh, in this role now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything Andrew said really resonates. Like you want to give, and Olivia, like you want to give feedback because these are your future colleagues and you want them to like, be performing well and taking care of patients and also like the fact that this carries potentially could like change their trajectory of like residency options um especially when you incorporate like grading bias and like underrepresented folks in medicine and like all of that kind of just makes how you evaluate a student more stressful than just giving feedback straightforward I think 
Yeah, so much appreciation. It is heavy responsibility, isn't it? And as someone who's not a resident, I just want to say it's incredible what all of you do. Like, the fact that you can do this is amazing. It looked like Kayla was unmuting herself. Oh, I was just going to say, I um, evaluated two medical students for the first time. And I think it was really hard because one of them seemed very advanced for a third year. And we had two on our team. And then I felt like I inevitably was comparing the two of them. And I felt like that wasn't really fair to the other medical student because just because one of them, like she seemed like almost like an intern at that point. And then the other medical student, it was, you know, their second rotation. And I felt like just the fact that I only had the two of them that I've ever graded and they were the only like reference I had, I felt like it was really hard to give an accurate grade. Yeah, that was discussed in, in the study participants as well in my study. I don't have any recommendations for how to do that, <laughs> especially as you're learning that process. It just sounds hard. I'm going to invite if, if anyone else has any other feedback or thoughts that they don't feel comfortable sharing with the group at large. Whitney, I hope you're okay if I have them email you directly or contact you directly. Absolutely. Yeah. I am working on publishing this. Uh, so hopefully it will be yeah. published soon. Yeah. Um, thank you all again. The, um, I, I'll put on my hat in terms of if I'm wearing my hat, uh, imagining the medical student programs. They also are exceptionally uh, appreciative of the thoughtful work and the the uh, deliberations that you put into putting these evaluations forward. They actually are super valuable to them. But I'm also going to say and remind you that you're one more piece of data. It's not just you that's making the decision and the grade, that there's a lot of input. And so I, to de-emphasize the stress that you might feel about um, if I put the wrong thing in here, it's going to mean the difference for their career. It's, it is one more data point and there's multiple views that are being taken into account. But thank you all for doing that work. Karen, do you want to take us forward here? Yep. Um, let's continue at 9.56 for a five minute break. Um, we'll be back um, to hear Andrew's talk. Uh, Whitney, if you haven't already, um, I would meet with Jenny Wright and share your data. Yeah, I I invited her to my presentation to leadership because okay. I presented it to some of the APDs and staff, but she didn't yeah. come. So I will reach out again. I know that Dan also um, said that he was going to meet with them about it. So. Yeah. No, I, I I very much wanted student programs to be there when I presented. It just didn't work. Um, I've, I've published a few qualitative pieces that can be a little hard to publish um, in terms of finding the right journal and the right audience. One of the parts that sometimes is helpful is um, in terms of when people talk about, um, they, they don't talk about, as you know, because you've researched this, it's, it's not validity in the same way, but um, you know, people will talk about um, one of the ways in which you sort of check against, check the um, sort of the truth as it were of your findings is to do member checking or what's sometimes called member checking. Member checking in this case, this could count as a, sort of a, a means of member checking, right? Like you're feeding it back to the group that you were that you were uh, doing qualitative interviews on, and getting feedback, and so it can serve a little bit of that in terms of when you write your paper. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Andrew, you should feel free to go ahead and try your. Uh... 
Yeah. Andrew, I wish I could stay for your presentation, but I have a meeting at 10. But I love that you're presenting. Thank you, Whitney, for your time and for presenting. There's a lot of good comments in the chat. I'm really happy I got to see you present your research. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. As I say, now for something completely different, gout. <laughs> <laughs> see you all later. Uh, we have an amazing staff, really skilled. Got Showing up for you guys. We're seeing the non-presenter view. We're seeing the, um, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. I, I scoped the Rocky and Bulwark Winkle reference on that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you and no one else. Watched a lot of uh, Cartoon Network when I was a kid. What can I say? And look where you are. Yeah, you I know. have I have hope for my kids. <laughs> <laughs> All is not lost. <laughs> Rock and Bullwinkle. There's an old show. Moose. Moose and squirrel. Moose and squirrel. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, 50 something other people are like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> uh, Karen, if you're recording, um, it's actually helpful to stop and then restart to have two separate recordings when we upload to the uh, 